If you've ever wondered what was the most pleasurable era in art, look no further than the Rococo period. This period spanned from the late 17th century to the early 18th century. John on the Le Fleganaz, the swing, takes a closer look into the realm of the Rococo art period. Seeming rather a simpler piece of work than art, there is a deeper meaning behind his work. This includes a very naughty point of view. With the aid of cultural studies, iconography, and gender studies, we can dive deeper into the backstory and meaning of Fragonard's most famous work. This is Jean Honoré Fragonard. He was under the tutelage of Boucher, who taught him the basics of painting and also the Fête Guelon. And Don Watteau was the painter who helped create the Fête Guelon. According to Jean Cusack, he described it as having to include a dreamy outdoor landscape music playing, couples, and usually a Greek or Roman god in the background. This can be seen in the Embarkation of Cythera by Jean Antoni Watteau. During the 1760s and 1770s, nobility had much of the power. The people were suppressed and some even starved, while nobility had their pleasure search. J. Smith's research showed that nobility even demanded patriotism from the lower classes because they felt that they were not patriotic enough and not doing enough for their country, when in reality, this was false. This pleasure search of the nobility was revolved around happiness. According to Jen Cusack, he gives an amazing description of what happiness is by saying that happiness and pleasure are good, but in a twinkling of an eye, they can be over. The Swing by Fragonard is his most famous piece of work. When you think of a swing, what do you think? Do you think of this? This is more of what the nobility thought of. Many people saw the swing going up and down and thought of it as a sexual illusion. This just shows how a simple child's toy can be turned into something so dirty. Breaking down the painting, we first see the dying branches. They're curved like a hand about to strike something. They're behind the scenes in the dark shadows and they're starting to die. Next, we see the woman. She is wearing a peach dress with a peach colored hat with a few blue flowers on it. She has red hair, rosy cheeks, and pale skin. She sits on the swing, taking her shoe off and staring at the base of a cupid statue. The swing is a little more on the fancy side. It has a red velvet type of material that has a golden base holding the seat together. It seems very unstable, unbalanced, and extremely worn. The man in the shadows is sitting on a stone bench, pushing the woman on the swing with two ropes in hand. He has white hair, a gray suit, and a button-up shirt. He is smiling and staring at the woman. There is also a house behind the man sitting with the appearance of a cage. We also see two cupids right under the woman on the swing. One is leaning his cheek on the other one's head, and their hands are overlapping one on top of another with closed fists. One is staring directly at the woman wide-eyed, while the other looks down and away from the woman. Next, we find a small dog on the bottom right-hand corner of the painting. He is gray with a splash of pink and blends in with the plant. He's barking at the base of the tree, leaning on a small, short, green fence. By implied lines, he is either barking at the woman or at the cupid statue. The garden is composed of multiple pink rose bushes that have grown over each other and are uncontrollable even by the small, short, green fence that seems to be meant to keep small animals out. The broom lost to the garden seems to be untouched and lifeless lying on the ground. The whole garden just seems neglected to be taken care of. Now we have the man lying in the uncontrollable garden. He is wearing a light gray suit with a pink rose and has gray hair with rosy cheeks. He crouches in the garden inside the private area and moves the rose bushes with his left hand. He stares upward, assuming at the woman as he becomes wide-eyed. Now there is this cupid statue. On the base of it, there are women who are naked and are trying to hide their faces and run to the other side of the statue out of the, of the viewer. Then there is Cupid himself. He is a stone statue with curly hair, muscular, and has wings. He looks like the statue of a normal man, and he has his finger to his lips as if he is saying to be quiet. He is either staring at the dog or the woman. This artwork was painted by Jean Honoré Fragonard and is titled The Swing. Made in 1767, it is an oil on canvas that is 2.5 feet by 2.1 feet. It can be seen in the Wallace Collection in London in the United Kingdom.
This artwork is representational since everything represents things and people from everyday life. There are also many types of lines, including geometric, organic, and implied lines. One example of an implied line is a man lying on the floor looking up at the woman on the swing. The space is overlapping considering the woman sitting on the swing or the Cupid's hands overlapping each other. The shape is two-dimensional since this is a painting. The value is cara scuro. The man in the background has a much darker area than the woman on the swing causing a harsh darkness into the light. The texture is visual since there is nothing to touch, but you can somehow feel a million little thorns stabbing you as the man pushes the thorn bushes back with his hand so freely. The color scheme is complementary since green is used in the majority of the background and is very well accented by the peach color of the woman and her dress. The scale is hierarchy scaling. The woman is bigger than any other figure in the painting. Everything is proportional and is in balance, and the emphasis or focal point is the woman considering the size she was given to the rest of the work. That concludes the elements and principles. The first way that I wish to interpret this artwork is through iconography. First, we look at the Cupid statue. Cupid is the god of desire. His legend is that he can fire one of his arrows at any person he chooses and they have to fall in love. His presence represents love, but in an on-the-down-low sort of love since his finger is to his lips. Having him in the painting gives the first sign of love brewing between the bushman and the swing woman. Next we see two smaller cupids. They represent love, but when you look closely, they both look a bit in distress. The item they are leaning on is actually a beehive. Now, according to legend, bees were given the ability to withstand the heat and the cold and given their lovely golden color by Zeus. Notice, however, that there are no bees inside of that beehive. Bees represent a supply of food and are able to withstand the elements. If there are no bees to provide the relationship with enough food to survive marriage, for example, where is this relationship between the two lovers going? This brings about the true nature of the Rococo era. Here, temporary pleasure and joy. The Cupids look mournful because of this fake and empty love. Continuing on, we see the small dog. Dogs in the day of Fragonard were a sign of love, loyalty, faithfulness, purity, and watchfulness. But the hushing Cupid is trying to silence the conscious watchfulness of something on the outside looking in. Cupid is putting to bed all of the signs of true love and loyalty by hushing the main symbol of them, the dog. When we move to social classes, many of you may ask, well, how were they created? Well, they are social constructs. According to Alexander Stingle, who wrote on cultural scripts, said that everyday tasks can become a defining feature in one's life. The repetition of a certain practice begins to form what we know today as a social script. How we act with other people and how they interact with us becomes a habit that forms an attitude that is hard to change because that is how we know how to act. We see in the swing the social construct of the rich and higher classes before 1789. How? When we look at Jay Smith's work, he goes to say that nobility took things way too far when it came to things such as nobility wanting patriotism from lower classes even though they were being treated poorly. Finally, the people got sick of how they were being treated and became aware of the classes they were being placed in. They decided to have the uprising, known as the French Revolution, which began in 1789, marking the downfall of the nobility. Finally, I want to speak on gender studies. In these times, women were no more than sexual objects to look at. Women were not treated as people, nor were they treated as equals in any way. Women were to be the proper figure, they were to dress appropriately, have proper manners, be polite, pure, domesticated, disciplined, and submissive. Although, in the Rococo era, that purity characteristic kind of went out the window. All these people wanted was pleasure, and women were the gateway for the men. One way we can see that the proper woman characteristics were changed is the disease that spread. The STD, known as syphilis, was rampant in the era. In many paintings, there are these black dots on people's necks. Yep, that's the STD in the flesh. Disgusting, right? Yet, some people did not care. Another way that women were used as sexual objects is in the painting, The Swing. The man is looking up the woman's dress. According to Jess Kusak, 
he had no underwear on. She was more than likely only wearing a shift with stockings. This is next to wearing nothing. I guess that's why she was kicking off her shoe in midair with her leg up. So we see she was used for a peeping Tom show which disrespects her and treats her as a sexual object rather than a human being. This is my artwork that I created. I call it Beyond the Swing. I wanted to give the swing a more modern feel. I take everyday superheroes and tell the story of today's society, at least the gender aspect. It takes a leap of faith into the new era of genders. Deadpool as a character is pansexual, which does highlight one of the many more complicated genders. In a past Golden Globe award ceremony, there was an incident where the Spider-Man and Deadpool actors kissed. Unlike the swing, there is an open field and clearing just to show how the red tape is starting to come down in the gender society. The cupids represent the desire of Deadpool and Spider-Man. The woman in the background, Domino, has the power of luck, but it just shows how we can turn away from luck and make things happen on our own. We can take charge of whatever situation we're in and not face it on chance that it will just happen one day. I hope you guys like it. Well, here we are at the end of the presentation. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves and learned a lot. But before we part ways, I want to ask you one question. What was the Rococo era's main objective concerning the feelings of nobility? What was the Rococo era all about for them? And with that, I bid you farewell and wish you the best on the rest of your endeavors while digging deeper into the minds of various artists and their artwork.